Hi everyone, Jay here at OpenText and in part two of our video series on how to set up the OpenText content server integration for Core, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in the admin consoles for both Core and content server to get everything up and running. So let's go ahead and get started right now with a few tips before we begin. If you haven't done so already, make sure you watch part one of this video series, letting you know how to set up an OpenText Core tenant to test out the integration between Content Server and Core. Second and most importantly, if you do not have version 16.2.8 of OpenText Content Server or higher, you will not be able to use and work with the bi-directional integration, the synchronization and collaboration of content between Core and Content Server that this version allows. Uh, if you have a previous version, there's an older uh, set of videos, a video series, to set up that one-way integration that was in the past. And finally, it's always a great idea uh, to use that tent that you've set up to just uh, create a couple of test users to try out the integration with. It's just going to make things a bit easier for you to try out the integration, make sure everything's up and running before you uh, set things fly in in OpenText Core with the content server integration. So with no further ado, let's get rolling. So the first step here, I've logged in as an administrator in that OpenText Core tenant. I'm going to go down to the security tab. Now in here, you're going to want to uh, scroll down to that OAuth confidential client. What that does really is build a trusted relationship between your core tenant and your content server environment. So that first field, the client description, you can go ahead and enter anything you want, but you want to make it practical. In my case, I'm going to call it production content server environment. You can call it whatever you want, but make it practical. That redirect URL has to exactly match your instance of content server. It's uh, how core is going to know where to share content with and where it's coming from. Then you're going to click create. What that's going to do is pop up what's called the client secret. Very important step here. Make sure you select it and copy it. What I do is set up a notepad for this because you're going to need it in a couple places later, both here and in content server. So you're going to head and paste that in there under the client secret so that you know what it is later on. And then you're going to want to go, after you've created that OAuth client, and copy that client ID. I just selected it and copied it. Go ahead and paste it into that notepad that you just created. You'll need that as well uh, for future reference. It's only going to take a couple minutes, so you don't even have to save that notepad. Now, next step, uh, final step in core, is the tenant service user. Now, what this is, is uh, Think of it as a robot that allows the flow of information back and forth based on that trusted relationship uh, and secure relationship between core and content server. It's important that you name this something practical because core uses it for notifications. So when something changes, when an invitation to share comes out, it's going to come from that tenant service user name. So you're going to want to name it something practical. In my case, uh, you know, just as an example, ABC Inc content server user. My notification here has Jay Weir has shared 123 Media with you. Whatever you put as the service user will be in that notification, so make it practical. Then you can just go ahead and describe it. I've uh, called that one the collaborative account for sharing between content server and core. Uh, you can uh, describe it any way you want. And then you're going to go back to that notepad. Very critical. You take that client ID that you just copied and pasted into that notepad and then you're going to create your service user again allowing the flow and synchronization of information between core and content server there's that content uh, sorry the client ID that matches the OAuth client up there the description and the username that you just entered uh, and that's about it for core for the time being Next, you're going to go to Content Server and log in as an admin. A lot of you uh, out there are going to be familiar with this. You'll see the familiar smart interface for Content Server show up here. But what, as an admin, we're going to want to do, I'm sure a lot of you do this on a daily basis, 
is go in and go to that classic view of the admin console for content server. Again, a lot of you are going to be familiar with this. Head to the admin menu and then select on content server administration. Bring you right out here. Makes it real easy in the latest version. You can just go ahead and search. What we're going to search for here, what we're going to need is content sharing. Two options. One for content sharing system settings. We'll get back to that shortly. But first off, we're going to head to the OpenText core settings. Now, most of you are going to pick either North America or Europe as a region of content server because it's SaaS, it's going to be pre-configured. Uh, in our case, or my case here, in trying to show this to you, I need a custom setting. You're probably going to pick North America or Europe. Then you're going to go ahead from your notepad there. Remember we cut and paste those, those uh, ID and the client secret. And you're going to go ahead and paste that client ID there and the client secret there under security parameters. Uh, another important aspect of control of sharing information, you can share or allow content server users to share as a manager, collaborator, viewer, or limited. These are OpenText core roles or permission levels. You can check that out on our YouTube channel uh, for descriptions, but you're going to want to make sure that you have that level of control of how information is shared uh, from core to content server. The next uh, step is that content sharing system settings. This is going to allow or basically globally allow people to share from content server to core. That shareable locations, depending on your folder structure in content server, you might want to restrict the ability, no matter who they are in your organization, to share, whether it be financial information, merger and acquisition activity, legal uh, action folders and projects, however you have it structured, you can restrict sharing or allow sharing from content server to core users from this uh, pane, the content sharing system settings. You're gonna go ahead and save those changes whenever you've determined if you want to restrict or allow all folders to be shareable uh, with core users. Finally, you're going to want to control who in your content server environment can share. Go ahead and search for usage uh, in the administrator console of content server then just do a search for core We're, what you're looking for is that content sharing operation right there I'm gonna go ahead and close the uh, search pane here uh, content sharing operation this is going to go ahead and edit it it's going to allow you to determine who in your content server environment what users can share with core users here we have the default group selected automatically. Depending on what you uh, have set up or what you've configured yours to look like, I'm gonna search for myself here. If I wasn't already a default group member, I could add by clicking submit. I could add Jay Weir as an individual, uh, give him permissions to share from content server to core, or I could go by group. So if there was a group called marketing, for example, or finance, legal, Go ahead and locate that in your content server directory of users and then submit allowing those users and those groups permission to share from content server to core. So that's about how easy as it gets to configure uh, from an administrator perspective in core and in content server administrator consoles the content server integration for core. If you're looking to learn more uh, you can't wait for part three, uh, which will outline the user experience, the really exciting stuff that shows how information flows and synchronizes between content server and core. You can head to our YouTube channel or visit us at core.opentext.com. That's about it for now, and I'll see you in part three.